Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the iBug Mac training program for Tuesday. That's today, May 10th. We will be continuing with our mail series, the final part of that. But first, as I say, these announcements. Our iBug Night at the Virtual Movies is coming up on Friday. This week's feature is What Happened to Baby Jane? I think that's the title. Hopefully I didn't butcher it. It's uh, what became of or what happened. Anyway, it is What Happened to Baby Jane. And that's at 8 o'clock. The pre-movie social is before that at 7.30. And then a discussion follows the movie. On Thursday, they're having, or we're having our iBug Vila Book Club at 6.30 p.m. Central. All of these events take place on our iBug Zoom. The book we're reading is called The Vanishing Half. I forget the author. It's a long one, though, so if you are interested, check the website, and maybe you can, if you put it on super speed, maybe you can get it read by Thursday. Otherwise, on Sunday, we have our iBug Cafe. I mentioned that would be postponed, and it is now taking place this Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. The topic is file management apps on our iPhones. So Dropbox, the Files app, other things to manage files. And don't forget about our raffle. We'll be having our iBug anniversary celebration, I think, on May 28th. Um, or t I'm forgetting the date, but you still have a chance to purchase one ticket for $10 or six tickets for $50. Details are on our website, um, iBugToday.org, and on our social media. So now I want to go ahead and get on with our lesson. Today's lesson is going to be a hodgepodge of different things because we'll talk about adding and removing mail accounts. Then we'll head on over to, well, visit the rest of mail preferences and look at a few things there, um, such as rules for composing or composing and signatures. And then I want to conclude with some tasks that we didn't finish last week, like finding a list of previous recipients, searching for a particular message or type of message, and then looking at an email with lots of different links and headings and navigational elements. So let's start with the accounts. And you have started computer audio share. if my audio is not being heard, um, Herbie will speak up. F fine. Otherwise, let's go into mail. There are technically two places where you can add um, email accounts. One is in mail. The other is internet accounts in system preferences. In system preferences, though, um, you can actually, so in mail, you go to remove an account and it will tell you to go to system preferences, internet accounts. Um, so I don't know why those two are so different, but you have to remove an account in internet preferences of the system preferences. Yeah, that's a mouthful. So let's just go into mail. Gulp. Mail, three of 25. I'm already focused on it. Finder, Dropbox alias, alias, mail. In and I'm feeling nice today, so I'm going to press command comma, and I'm telling you that. Privacy. And if you, you should know what that is, um, to open mail preferences. Let's now go to the toolbar. It remembers the last thing that I was looking at in preferences or viewing. Toolbar. So I pressed view home, and now I will interact with the toolbar. In toolbar. 10 items. Privacy. Selected And button. I'm going to uh, just view home. General button. And VO right once. Accounts button. To accounts and press VO space. Account selected. Out of toolbar. I'm uninteracting. Internet accounts table. Chanel IMAP. Press selected. VO right arrow. This table shows me all of the different accounts that I currently have set up um, in mail on this Mac. Herbie IMAP. Herbie Chanel IMAP. Mac training IMAP. And the internet accounts pane of system preferences would show the same thing. Um, it would have this accounts Chanel, table, and then it would have a, also have a new account types table. But instead of looking at the rest of the options here, I am going to jump to the end with VO end, or you would be using VO FN right Help arrow button. on a regular laptop keyboard. Spacer, did remove account button, new account button. I've pressed VO left arrow a few times. Now I'm going to press VO space. In dialog, new account types table. Choose a mail account provider. The first account we are going to add is a Gmail account. Then we will add my Comcast account. And 
just to show you how the Mac can find the appropriate server settings, even if the account isn't listed. But let's just take a look at the listed accounts. In new account types table, iCloud radio account button. Types. iCloud radio button. So first we have iCloud. Exchange radio button. Exchange. Google radio button. Google. Yahoo radio button. AOL radio button. Other mail. Other mail account. Other. Okay, and other and. I don't know who uses AOL these days. Yahoo, I've heard, has had some problems. So most of the time, unless you use Google or Exchange, you're probably going to be going to other. AOL, Yahoo, but Google since Radio. But a lot of people do use Google. We're going to go to that first. I was pressing VO up arrow a few times. I'll press VO space Selected. to select Google. And there is a continue button to the right of this table. I could go find it or I could just press enter, which I'll Press enter now. Safari. Okay. We are taken to sometimes voiceover will actually read. That is, it is an in private browsing window. And this is to authenticate for Gmail. Um, I think Yahoo did this or used to do this too, where it would bring up a website in Safari. And now we are going to fill in the details. I am going to be using autofill and iCloud Keychain. Um, let me just verify that I'm on the email field. I'll VO right and VO left. Forgot email, email or phone, edit text email field. Email or phone, edit text email field. And down arrow. Other usernames. Touch okay. ID to autofill with iBug, dot Mac and talk. At email or Oops. phone, edit text email. It would email. help if I didn't accidentally inadvertently press keys while reaching over for the touch ID. Before using this app, you can review Mac OS's link. All right. Try forgot email, email or phone, edit text email field with autofill menu. And I to am... open the autofill menu, I enter your password, secure edit text spot. with autofill menu. And to it open automatically the brought menu, up the press... password field, which was next. If you were entering this manually, you would have typed in your email or down username app. and then pressed enter or gone to the continue button. And now I'm being asked for my password. So I'll put my finger here again. 23 carat verify it's you to help keep your account safe. Google wants to make sure it's really you trying to sign in. Okay. And the moral of all that is I didn't actually really need to do any up arrowing or down arrowing because as soon as I put my finger on that touch ID sensor, it just filled in what it was supposed to fill in. But now I think we are gonna have to do a little fiddling. Gmail now wants to send me a text to help keep your account code. safe. Google wants to make sure it's really you trying to sign in. ibug.macntalk at gmail.com. I don't actually use this address, so don't email me here. It's just one I created to for demonstration purposes for this lesson. Heading level two. Get a verification. Google will send a verification code to comma zero three. Sounds Standard good. Up send button. I've just been pressing via right arrow a bunch of times. I'll now press via space. Verify it's you to enter the code, edit text telephone number field. Oh, I have do not disturb on. So it may. Next, enter the code. Give us a little bit of a problem. Next, enter the code, edit text tele. All right, let's see if I turn do not disturb on. Application off. microphone, Amadeus Pro and Zoom, Amadeus Pro, Wi-Fi, do not disturb, select it. FaceTime, scam likely, missed Safari. Okay, Sa and now. Next. Enter the code, edit text telephone number field. Fill no. security code oh. messages, 22,000, G09. Fill security code from messages, G09770. Right, so I just basically was doing an up arrow and down arrow and again, and then I, one of the presses, it told me, so now I'm going to press enter. Zero nine, web, mail, accounts, window, dialogue, has keyboard focus. And let's turn do not disturb back on just... Uh, to be safe. Application, Wi-Fi, Amadeus Pro, wi Focus, Toggle Button. Do not disturb. And how I did that, I Actions went available. just as a review to my control center with VO, Shift, O. I pressed VO right arrow over to Focus, and then I pressed VO space on that, and it activated Do Not Disturb. Mail, Accounts, Window. Select the apps you want to use with this account. Okay, select the apps we want to use with this account. Table. Mail. Check checkbox. Mails checked. Contacts. Uncheck checkbox. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Calendars. Use... Uncheck checkbox. If we wanted to check this box, we just press space. 
notes, uncheck check calendars, uncheck check box. Um, actually, we'd interact with the table, table first because Cal it's wanting to be difficult. Notes, so uncheck check box. So if we wanted box. to check notes, we'd press VO space. Checked. Notes, check check box. And there we go. And now we're done. Out of tape cancel button. So I'm pressing VO right. Done. Default button. And there is a done button there. So we could have just pressed enter without having to leave that table. New account button. Uh, but we did VO space. Okay. Now we are handily taken back to the new account button. Before we actually look at what the account settings are for the Gmail account, let's go add Comcast. In dialog, new account types, table. Choose a mail account in new account Here type. Here we are in our table. I interact again. Exchange Google Radio, Yahoo, AOL Radio, other mail account, other account radio button. Press VO space on other. Selected. Uninteract. Out of new account types, table. VO well, I was about to say via right. We can just press enter. Or Email really address, name, at example.com, edit text. Okay, here I am going to enter my Comcast email. CHM, period, CHM Allen, at Comcast, period, Comcast.net. And this time I am going to tab. There are really only two fields here. It's not like the other in Gmail where it brought up Safari and so we had to enter something on each page. This is a, just a typical text entry area with you know two fields for the username and password. Password required. Secure edit text. And I actually know what this password is. Yeah, it's click, 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 click. That's the password. Now I will press enter. Dialog. And we're taken to that dialog again. If I feel left, select the apps you want to use with this account. Table. And here we In go. Table. We have the table. Mail. Check, check. Notes. Check, check. Box. Notes. Check, uh, check. Box. I don't really want notes. So I'll uncheck it. Unchecked. And then press enter. New account button. And we're back to the new account. I'd like to go to the accounts table so that we can change a few things about the accounts I've added. Toolbar. I pressed VO home or VO FN left arrow to get to the toolbar. If I VO right arrow once. Internet accounts table. Chanel IMAP. We're at the internet selected. accounts table. I can interact. In internet Herbie IMAP. Herbie Chanel IMAP. I bug. Dot Mac and talk at gmail.com IMAP. Okay. Out of I internet. want to rename this account. So account if information I, selected tab. One, I three. got out of the table and we have three tabs here. We'll see what's in account information. Mailbox behaviors, tab, two of Mail, three. Actually, well, I don't think this would. So I was thinking about a question we had earlier about adding a new Gmail account and attempting to specify if the messages could just be kept on the server without downloading them. Um, Mailbox behaviors technically allows you to specify whether your sent items or trash or drafts are stored on the server or on your Mac. I just leave them set to their defaults, which I believe is on the Gmail website. And so that I don't think makes a difference about what emails are downloaded, but it just gave me a pause there for a moment. Server settings tab three and three. server settings. This allows you to input those very specific server values, port numbers, SMTP, all those things if you need to do so. If you're directed to uh, by your service provider or if you are having an, a problem with your account not being able to get online or send. But since there are so many different types of configurations, I am not even going to go into that server settings tab. If you are having problems though, and if you need help, that's something we can definitely walk you through at one of our meetings um, in Herbie's Club or at the iBug Today things, or if you're really nice, which I know you are, you can give Herbie or me a call. And But anyway, you should, it's very straightforward. So you should be able to figure that out. Most of you just use automatic, those things like Google and Yahoo, where you don't even need to worry about server settings. Enable this account, checked checkbox. Enable this account. There have been times where uh, when I was using the exchange account through the university, it would, there were times when I couldn't enter the right password or the site hadn't updated the password even though I changed it. So it was useful to disable the account for a little while. And you can disable it with that box if you uncheck it. 
then it's disabled and you don't actually have to go remove the account. Status. Online. It gives you the status, whether the account's online. Available image. Ibug.macntalk at gmail.com. Content selected. Description. Edit text. Here is the description. I'm just going to put in my name. Actually, no, I don't want to put in my name. I'm just going to call it Macintosh. Selection replaced. Mac. Cap. N. Hyphen. And I put talk. that there. It deleted over the text that was already in the field. If I view right. Chanel Allen Ibug. Macintalk at gmail.com. Email address. Pop up button. Here you can choose the email address. Um, that is displayed when you send messages from this account. You can also add in a name and email address. Um, sometimes when I'm sending from the account that Herbie and I share, I don't want my messages to say Herbie Allen. I want them to say Chanel Allen. And the table there is a little bit funky. You just have to use your via left and via right to kind of know um, where you're at. I think the email field is before the name, but it's been a while since I've looked at it. Recent. Download attachments. Pop-up button. Okay, you can download attachments. Menu check none. All. Um, check mark. Recent. I don't know if it Recent. just automatically downloads attachments. Generally, I save the ones I want to keep. Send large attachments with mail drop unchecked. Checkbox. Mail drop basically is a service that creates a link to the attachment rather than sending the whole file. New account button. And there we have the new account. Remove account button. And remove. Um, I am going to go to remove account. And there's really, we could also look at the Comcast account, but there's not too much there. Actually, there's nothing really different. So um, let's go to remove. In dialog, alert, cancel button. Internet accounts, default. But you can remove this account from iCloud and internet accounts. I was just pressing via left arrow a few times to get some additional context. Now if we via right. Internet accounts, default button. So it will take us there via Remove space. account, system preferences, search text field, blank. We are in system preferences and placed in that annoying edit field. Out of toolbar. So the first thing to do is uninteract. Internet account, internet account sets up your accounts to use with mail, contacts, calendar, messages, and other apps. All right. Internet accounts, table, Mac and talk mail, notes, selected, Mac and talk image, Chanel Allen, details button, ibug, dot Mac table. And in, table, in this table, mail, check, check, contacts, uncheck, check, box, calendars, uncheck, notes, check, check notes, check out of table. We can disable the services. So it, um, if you ever wanted to uh, disable a calendar or notes or whatever associated with the account, you would do that in system preferences under the internet accounts pane. Help button. Add an account button. Delete the selected but account button. But we want button. to delete the selected account, so we'll do that. In dialog, remove from all button. De turn off account button. Removing from all computers using iCloud keychain will remove it from this Mac, Chanel's MacBook Pro, Chanel's MacBook Pro 2, and more. Okay. Turn off account button. Remove from all button. Del delete the selected account button. And there we go. Most of the time, you probably won't even be needing to remove internet accounts. You'll be using them. But if you have seven or eight like me, um, you may not want all of them all at once. I'm going to close this, uh, the system preferences with command Q. Finder, desktop, Dropbox alias. And now alias. we are going to return to mail to view the rest of mail, mail. mail preferences. I'll toolbar. go to my toolbar, interact. In toolbar. 10 items, accounts, selected, button, general, button. General is the first button, and I'll press via space. It's to the left of accounts. General selected, out of toolbar. Interact. Mail app, default email reader, pop-up button. You can specify, just like in um, the previous iOS in, oh, whatever it was, Big Sur, you could now specify whether you use the Outlook app or some other mail app as your default uh, mail reader. Automatically. Check for new. Personally, I think that the Apple Mail app is way better than Outlook for many things, but um, you may feel differently. Mail app automatically. Check for new messages. Pop up button. Automatically. Menu check mark automatically. And it used to be, you know, you would set this at a specific time interval every one minute. Every minute. If you want to do that, you can come every five into minutes, this menu. Every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, manually. Um, 
But if you are for the instant gratification, Check mark. you may just want to set it for manually Automatically. or one Check minute. Check for new breeze. New messages sound. Pop up button. We have a limited selection of new message sounds. Menu check mark, breeze, bubble, crystal. If I choose the sound and I press enter, crystal, new messages sound, pop up button. We get to hear what that button. sounds like, so then I, I'm just pressing space to menu. Menu check menu. mark, crystal, funky. Um, actually, I'll up arrow check mark, back bubble, to breeze. breeze, press enter. Breeze, new messages sound, pop um, up button. For a while, I was actually setting it to be different than the typical notification sound because I was wondering... Why I was getting so many uh, sounds that didn't appear in my system notifications. And then I realized it was all the mail messages coming in to those, you know, five or six or however many accounts. Play sounds for other mail actions. Checked. Checkbox. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool if I could use the swoosh sound that is for sent mail to indicate that I've got a new message coming in. But it doesn't let you do that. Inbox only. Duck unread count, pop up button. You can show in your dock how many messages are in red for your inbox or all mailboxes. Inbox only. New message notifications, pop uh, up button. Same with new message notifications. If you want to turn, you can set that for VIPs, a couple other things. But if you want to turn off the notifications altogether, you have to go to system preferences. Um, I forget what the pane is called, the exact wording, but focus and... Notifications, you find mail in that table and untick the box for allow notifications. Downloads. Downloads folder. Pop up button. Okay, this has to do with where attachments are saved. Menu by check default. mark. Other ellipses. Check mark. And your only choices are downloads Down and other. So if you've ever, you know, just saved, had it automatically save something from mail attachments and you're wondering where it is. It, you might look in your downloads folder. Load. Safari, by default, tends to send things to your documents folder. Um, well, actually, I don't know if it does, but t attachments tend to end up in one of those places, documents or downloads. After message is deleted, remove unedited downloads, pop up button. Archive or delete muted messages, unchecked, checkbox. Just as with text messages, or iMessages in particular, you can actually mute message threads. And um, this just specifies Caught archive or delete muted messages unchecked. Check if off. you want to archive or delete those muted messages. Automatically try sending later if outgoing server is unavailable. Checked checkbox. And that's a great option. You can also specify if you go into server settings for a particular account, you can specify alternative outgoing servers. Prefer opening messages in split view when in full screen. Unchecked checkbox. I think that's more iPad type behavior. I just leave it unchecked. When searching all mailboxes, include results from. Okay, when searching all mailboxes, if you're like me, you may frequently delete messages that later on you think, oh, maybe I actually did want that. And so then you have to search your trash. So you wanna make sure the trash and a few other folders are checked here. Trash, checked, checkbox. Junk checked checkbox. Encrypted messages checked check help button. I have them all checked. That way when it performs a search of all mailboxes, those will be included. Toolbar. Okay, I'm going to interact and back in the toolbar. In toolbar, accounts button. And we were just at accounts. Junk mail button. Junk mail. Junk mail select out of toolbar. I do not use junk mail filtering on the Mac. I let Gmail take care of that for me. Lately, it's been really hit and miss. So... Using it might be tempting on the Mac. I've gotten some things identified as spam that are clearly not in some spam messages ending up in my inbox. So it's always good to have a backup plan, I suppose, and you can do that on your Mac. Junk mail behaviors selected tab blocked tab two of enable junk mail filtering unchecked checkbox. And if I check this box, then we can specify a bunch of things. The next set of options will all be dimmed because this initial box is unchecked. When junk mail arrives, mark as junk mail, but leave it in my inbox. Dim selected. Move it to the junk mailbox. Dimmed. Ra perform custom actions. Click advanced to configure. Dimmed. Radio. So at least it's nice that it doesn't automatically move junk mail if you don't want it to. Button. The following types of messages are exempt from junk mail filtering. 
Center of messages in my contacts, dim checked. Center of messages in my previous recipients, dim checked. Messages addressed using my full name, dim checked. Check. Trust junk mail headers and messages, dim checked. Filter junk mail before applying my rules, dim done checked. Reset, dimmed, but advanced, right. dinged, but help, but And you have some bar. options there. Junk mail blocked tab. The Two blocked of tab, interestingly, I was looking at that earlier, and it shows me numbers that I blocked from text messages. So it uses those. Um, as blocked for mail, apparently, if I had my junk mail filter on. Junk mail toolbar into fonts and colors button. Fonts and colors. This is for how the font that's used when you compose a message and for just viewing the message list. And changing the font is very similar. Well, it is basically the same process to how we changed it in text edit. Viewing button. Here we have viewing. Viewing selected. Out of toolbar, five lines, list preview, pop up button. Okay, one really important thing to know about the list preview. When use column layout is unchecked, and most of us agreed in the study session that we keep it that way, whether you set the preview to one line or five lines doesn't seem to matter. The same amount of info is read if you have used column layout unchecked. And that being said, when I played with this setting last year, that was the case. I have not played with it this year. So who knows? I just, I've left it at the maximum amount of lines. So in case there is a difference, I will get the maximum preview because I'm lazy. I don't like to necessarily, you know, most messages these days seem to be one or two liners anyway. So then you press enter just to open a message with two words in it. Um, so I, I really like my previews. I don't know why I didn't like them before, but I like them now. Okay, moving on. Archive. Move discarded messages into pop-up button. I believe the default might be trash. I just chose archive because I know Gmail does it anyway, but that may not matter so much. Default. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. There's a lot for me to learn or try to keep track of and all these little settings, it's good to go over, but it, it can be very difficult to remember trivial things. And I certainly don't expect you to. I just expect that you kind of have an overall idea of what's in what and where you might go if you want to change certain behaviors. Display unread messages with bold font, unchecked, checkbox. I believe that um, it's still when the pane to the right of the messages list is expanded in mail, Unread messages are still marked with bold font. We can't necessarily see that. So to all, all our intents and purposes, they are red. And so, you know, we don't, that's why we collapse that pane. But a sighted person, uh, bleh, oh dear. A sighted person can know if a message is unread um, because it will display in bold font. Use smart addresses, unchecked, checkbox. Turn this off to always display names and addresses. All right, so sometimes you might find an Outlook or other programs where it just displays the person's name. Um, that's what I assume is referred to as a smart address. I have that off, so when I am copying email addresses, I can copy the full address, name and address. Use dark backgrounds for messages. Checked. Checkbox. That I don't think matters. View conversations. Highlight messages with color when not grouped. Unchecked. Dim gray. Use the view menu to group messages by conversation. Include related messages. Checked. Checkbox. Okay. Mark all messages as read oh, when opening see. a conversation. Checked. Checkbox. So what's important to know here is that viewing includes several options related to threads. You'd think you would find it in the view menu because you can turn on or off um, organized by thread it directly in the view menu. But these other options about marking messages Include read, related message, mark all me related messages, and most importantly, show most recent message at the top, unchecked. Show most recent message at the top. Um, that is when you have to configure by going into mail preferences and then viewing. I have that unchecked, but if you want the most recent, recent message at the top of your thread, that is not controlled by the sort by setting in the view menu. It is controlled by the view settings here in the viewing uh, tab of mail preferences. Help so, button, help button. That's important to know. Toolbar. All right, let's get back to the toolbar and move on. In toolbar, 10 items, viewing, select composing button. Composing. Composing okay, selected. There's lots of interesting things here. Out of toolbar, composing. 
Rich text. Message format. Pop up button. Your choices are either rich text or plain text. When I click send, check spelling. Pop up button. Okay, here is that setting that Nikki and I were talking about last week. When does your Mac check for spelling as you're composing a message? And your choices you check are mark, never check mark when I click send. When I click send, that is the Outlook type behavior. Never as I type. Or just the default is actually as I type. When I click Regardless of what this is set to, you can always do command semicolon or command colon. Command semicolon allows you to go through the document um, error by error where you get placed on the word and then you do VO shift M to look at some alternative suggestions. So you can use those things regardless of what this option is set to. But if like me, you just kind of get hurry to send off an email and forget to spell check, you may want that Outlook type feature that checks it automatically before you send. And you find that in composing. And um, I'm just drawing attention to it because we discussed this in the study session last week. Automatically unchecked checkbox, CC, pop up button, myself, addressing. When sending to a group, show all member addresses unchecked checkbox. Okay. When it's sending to a group, show all member addresses. I have definitely played with this setting. You would think when it is unchecked that it would not show people's names. It's only supposed to show the group name. Um, in the past, I had groups. I created a contact group, uh, maybe iBug Mac course. And all the students were in that and all the email addresses were there. And then you just type that into the to field and it would put in that group. With this setting unchecked, it should only show that group name in the to field. But unfortunately, it behaves as though it's checked. And so no matter what you do, it doesn't make a difference. Um, I think this used to function better several years ago. The long and the short of it is, if you really want to keep recipients anonymous from one another, put them all in the BCC field. That's just um, kind of mail etiquette or whatever, 101. I don't feel bad, though, because I don't think I really learned that until a few years ago. So anyway, if you want to keep everybody anonymous from one another, just put them in the BCC field and don't worry about this. Addressing. When sending to a group, show all member addresses unchecked. Check mark addresses not ending with unchecked. Domain at example to automatically select best account. Send new messages from pop up button. Okay, actually, this is really important. Um, I know that some of you have asked questions about choosing the appropriate account for sending email. Herbie, well, some people I know love the automatically select best account option. I have found that to be very inaccurate. It doesn't know always what account I want to send from. So Menu I like mark. to choose my default account. Chanel Allen Janellum dot Allen at gmail dot com. And that's the account I send from the most. Chanel Allen Janellum. I think it tries to predict which account based on maybe what inbox you're in or um, what address you're sending to, but but that does not always reliable. Responding. Use the same message format as the original message. Checked. Check. Respond using rich or plain text. Quote the text of the original message. Checked. Check. Increase quote level. Checked. Check. When quoting text in replies or forwards, include all of the original message text. Radio button. So these are options dealing with replying. Include selected text, if any. Otherwise, include all text. Help button. Help button. And there we go. Toolbar. In toolbox signatures button. Now we are at signatures. Signature selected. Okay. I don't use signatures too much, but I'll out tell you the little bit I've figured out. Signatures table, row one of nine. All signatures. So okay, this is a table showing one all signatures, and below that, Chanel, Herbie, Chanel, Herbie, 980. This, these are a list of my accounts. I have not, so you want to actually put a signature in the account where you will use it. You could try to create one in all signatures, but then you have to drag it to one of your other accounts. And I've not found an accessible way to do that. So let's say I want to create a signature specifically for my Mac training account. We'd find that in this list. 98 point Mac training. And then view right. Vertical splitter. Names empty table. Remember, there's always a vertical splitter separating two different tables or lists. 
Vertical splitter. Oops. Text. Okay. Add button. And, you know, a list from text. But we want to go to add, and I'll press VO space here. Signature number one. Content selected. Edit text. And I'm just going to call this Mac training. Selection replace. Mac. And training. rather than pressing enter here, I'm going to uninteract. Out of names table. Vertical splitter. Chanel Allen Mac training. Dot I book today at gmail.com. And Chanel then it Allen. puts in the, my name and the email address. Mac training. Uh, Chanel Allen. Let's say I wanted to put, Mac um, I don't know. I bug. Oops. Misspell. I bug. Misspell. Mac. Mac. Misspell. Mac training. I bug to NG. And it's saying, um, misspelled because I was, went, pressed command left arrow for the beginning of the line, started typing, and then I pressed enter. But there should be I no bug Mac instructor. There should be no misspellings. Mac training dot I bug today at gmail dot com. And there we go. Mac training dot I bug today at out of add button. Remove button. Always match my default message font. Checked checkbox. Okay, you may. So I actually don't know if people really f fancy up their signatures. If you did, you would want to uncheck this box to match your default font. And then use a program like Text Editor Pages. You know, maybe I would do that to center it, bold my name, italicize, whatever, put it in bigger font. Whatever people like to do. If you want to do all those things, then uncheck this match my font um, checkbox. None. Choose signature pop up button. And this is the signature that is chosen by default when you send from this account. When you go to compose a message, there will be a signature. Um, pop-up button. I can't remember. I think it was actually there last week when we were composing, but it's just another another one of many things in that compose area that you have to deal with, and you could choose the signature or not. If you are sending from a different account, though, uh, this signature won't show. Place signature above quoted text. Checked. Checkbox. And Help button. There Help we go. Button. Place none. Always met. Remove button. I'm just going to go to remove. Add button. And toolbar. there we go. In toolbar, 10 items, signatures, select rules button. Okay, rules. You can create rules on your Mac. Rules are basically um, filters for messages. I actually use Gmail filters. Um, what a rule would do, let's say you have a message from specific people. Let's say you have a, a rule, you have a filter, you want all messages from ibug.mactraining or whatever our email address is to be deleted. No. Um, so you would specify those criteria and then that rule could be automatically applied as the messages come in. But that rule would only work when you're checking messages on your Mac. If you go check email on your iPhone, or Windows or another device, that rule would not be applied. So that's why I prefer to use rules directly on the Gmail server. Or um, there they are called filters. I used to have a bunch of rules um, for the Orbit Reader email list that was so high traffic, and that would automatically go into the Orbit Reader folder or Gmail label. The problem is, or same with a bunch of Apple lists I was on, and that would go to that folder so they wouldn't be in the inbox. Problem is, forget to check those folders and they get thousands of messages in them and then they just all get deleted. So, um, but if you're really busy and have several work projects, filters and rules may be a good idea. Just know if you want them to apply more globally, rules may not be your best friend, but if you want, if you only check email on your Mac, then by all means use rules. And I have not had too much experience with configuring them. I assume though, like anything else on the Mac, the process is accessible. Extensions button. Okay, extensions was also added in Mac OS Big Sur. I have not found any mail extensions. Um, Maybe that'd be something like if the Grammarly app or something ever came out with a mail extension that checked your work as you're writing or who knows. I, I'm not aware of any mail specific extensions. Privacy button. And then we have privacy, privacy selected, which is also new. Out of toolbar. And mail privacy protection. Protect mail activity. Checked checkbox. Protect mail activity. Text. Mail privacy protection works by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message. 
This makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. Link. Learn more. All right. This is just part of um, Apple's, you know, privacy protection measures, and hopefully it helps. I don't know. I mean. Hide IP address. Dim checked. Checkbox. Block all remote content. Dim done checked. Checkbox. I wouldn't block all remote content because some of that can be important links, but um, it's useful, I guess, for it to hide your traffic as much as possible. Help button. And there tool we go. Bar. In tool privacy. And select privacy is the last option. Out of tool bar. Okay, we are done in Mail Preferences. I will press Command W to get out of the Preferences window. Close. Inbox. Chanel. Now I want us to go to our list of previous recipients. And we can actually do that if we bring up the menu bar. Menu bar. Apple. And type W for Window. Window. Down arrow to open Window. The menu. menu. PR. Previous, previous recipients. recipients. Press Enter. Previous recipients. Previous recipients search. Window. Search text field. We could search Blank. for someone. 1942. Just checking the time. Wow. Previous right. recipients. Cable. And now, if I just down arrow. ACB community events plus subscribe at ACB community events request at ACB crafters plus Becky Dunkerson. Acby Dorg. In contacts. Dimmed image. And then Alice we George. see things at that are actually in contacts. To the right of this table, remove from add to contacts dimmed. Button. We have a remove and add. Remove from, from list the button. The list. So um, let's go to the top of the table. Previous ACB community, which we can always do with option up arrow, takes us to the first item in a table. Let's say I wanted to add this to my contacts. I can view right. Remove from list button. Add to contacts button. View space. Help button. And other than the cursor jumping, we get no confirmation that it's in contacts. If I want to double check, though, I can open my contacts app in my doc. Doc. Contacts. 17 of 25. For contacts. Press enter. Mail. Preview. Contacts. Contacts. Search. Window. Search. And if I search for ACB and then via right. AC vertical splitter. Contact list. Table. ACB community events plus subscribe at tag lists ORG. Selected. And I actually don't really want that in my contacts, so I can press Command Delete. In dialog, alert, cancel, but delete, default. It's interesting Contact how Christopher in certain Gray. areas of the Mac you can use Command Delete and others you can't. When we were getting rid of email accounts from System Preferences, I think I tried it there. You can't use Command Delete, but you can use it to delete a contact, Gray. or you can use Command Delete. And if you are in Amadeus Pro and you want to delete a device that you created, that's really random. But just showing sometimes you can use Command Delete and sometimes you can't. Okay, I'm going to get out of contacts. Finder, desktop, Dropbox alias, alias. Command tab back to mail. Mail, mail, previous recipients, window, help button. Previous okay. zoom button, minimize button, oh. zoom previous help button, search, search text feed, previous recipients table. Interestingly, the help button was towards the beginning of this window, not at the end where I'm used to seeing it. So I was pressing via left to go backward when I actually needed to do via right to go forward. As with other, like our file list and finder, in we can select a recipients bunch of table. Um, items in this table. So if we just did shift down arrow, blank, added to selection. To blank. Added to selection. Oh, that's blank, helpful. Blank. Name blank. Email. Okay. ACB there we go. Now we can actually hear what is being selected. I just pressed VO right a couple of times. And now if we did VO down, I mean shift down arrow. ACB crafters plus subscribe. Acby dorg at gmail.com. At grj221 at gmail. Agnes dot fair. Ag at grj221 at gmail. And we could just delete gmail, you know, a few of these things. Um, you can press delete or um, command delete last used Actually, out of previous you can't. okay so anyway that's the table let's say you wanted to Recipients copy an address from the table AC. The community events request it. Um, you would do VO Shift C to copy the last spoken text to the clipboard last phrase copied to the clipboard um, there is no convenient way to select it but yeah, this is just, you could also do Command A. 277 rows selected. We could select all of these and then go remove to from list button. remove from list. So that is our autocomplete list or previous recipients list. I'll press Command W to close this window. Close. Inbox. Chanel 247 messages. One unread window. Okay. And now I'm going to show you something that is a bit temperamental as if all these things haven't been, but this is more so. 
And that is searching for a message. Messages table. Let's say I want to find a message on um, book clubs. I, we, I forgot what we were reading for the iBook Today book club. You can bring up a search using command option F. The problem is I've noticed that doesn't always take me to the edit box in the toolbar. But let's try it now and see what happens. If I type command option F. Mailbox search. And it didn't tell me it was in the edit. So let's view left. Vertical split mailboxes toolbar. Oh, we're not even in the toolbar. So let's interact. In toolbar, nine items filter. And before I had hidden the toolbar, but when we do command option F to bring up the search, the toolbar becomes visible. Get mail, new message, archive, delete, junk, but more tool, search text field, blank. And here I could type in the words book club. Book menu. Club. And the menu allows you to say, like, if I down arrow. Subject contains book club. Vila Book Club, March 14th, 2019. Vila Book Club meeting, February 8th, 2018. So it's looking at specific subjects. Vila Book I subject just contains go back book club. B U U B. The the top. I just press left arrow to get out of that menu. So if I press enter. Book club. Selected. And then I uninteract. Out of toolbar. And via right. Mailboxes table. Chanel vertical split messages table. And we do have vertical some mailboxes if I go toolbar. To the left, found 30 results. Oh, it found. Searching inbox, Chanel. Wow, it found 30 results just in my inbox. I must save a lot of messages about book clubs. Okay, if you want it though to search other mailboxes, you have to take another step, and that is to show the favorites bar which we can do with command option shift H show or favorites go to bar. the view menu. Now if we show the favorites Vertical bar. Vertical messages table. Um, Vertical mailboxes favorites bar group. And interact. In favorites bar group. 10 items toggle sidebar button search. All toggle button. And let's say we wanted to search all. I can press VO space. Selected. Now I can VOJ. That's probably the easiest way um, I was giving you an overview of the layout, but let's let's just see what happens when I VOJ. In toolbar, in mailboxes, in messages, table, top hits. So then we get taken right to where we need to be at the top hits. Okay, and since we did VOJ, I think we need to VO down arrow. Unread, ACB Crafters, ACB Crafters, book club selection for May, April 25th, 2022. Which actually uh, sounds kind of good, by the way. I looked it up for a friend. Um, unread. ACB Crafters, ACB Crafters, ACB Event, Today Crafty Book Club, April 20, all results. Daniel Kramer, Emma Unread, The New Hoffs Tater, The Colby Garrison, AC3 Message Conversation, Collapsed, Victoria, Chanel, Cindy Hollis, ACB Community Events, well, Import Cindy Hollis, all right. ACB I don't know Community what Events. I don't know what happened to the one about the iBug Book Club, but that's okay, you get the idea. All right, let's say we want to do another search, so I'm going to type Command Option F. Mailbox Search. Jay Cindy Hollis. And of course, out it of didn't take us there. So let's get back Vertical to the toolbar. Vertical split mailboxes, favorites, toolbar, in toolbar. 10 items, save search, dimmed. Filter, group, get mail, new message, archive, delete, junk, but reply. Book club, content selected, search text field. And let's say I want to search for raffle. Select menu. And this time raffle. I'm just going to press enter. Raffle. And now that we've specified that we want to search in all mailboxes, there's nothing we need to do outside of the toolbar. So this should technically be how simple a search is. Once you find the search box, type your word in, press enter. Then you should be able to do VOJ a couple of times. 1,442 found. In mailboxes, table. In messages, table. Top hits. And we're at top hits. Blake, Luann via NFB Net members list. Uh, Janet DeGelman. All results. Blake, Lu, Janet DeGelman. American Council, well, American Council. Ion Saichi Mac. Two message. Monica Svoka. Belinda Collin. Colby Garrison. All right. A um, yeah, that ACB wasn't community. exactly what we had in mind. I was thinking of the iBug. So maybe I would have needed to be more specific in my search and type in iBug raffle. And we could, you know, continue to go do that. The important thing is you can search if you want to search. You just do command option F or just bring up your toolbar, go to the end of the toolbar, type the words in, press enter, 
And if it's only searching the your events. inbox, There's you need to then show the favorites bar. So you can choose all mailboxes or choose any particular mailbox that happens they to schedule. be in favorites. And then you will search. So um, the other annoying thing is to get out of the Late. search, out of I need to go bar. clear what's in the tool in bar. 85 found raffle. Content selected. Search text field. And I don't know why it said 85 found here, but there were a lot more messages elsewhere. Anyway. Inbox, Chanel 247 messages. I pressed delete and that took us back to our normal view. Mailbox favorites bar. Inbox. We still full have screen. the favorites, bar, favorites bar, but bar. it got rid of the toolbar. Um just by hitting delete key in the text entry field. So now I'm gonna press command option shift H. Hi favorites. Rid of favorites. Bar. Vertical messages unread. Google. Security alert for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Security alert, delete. Paul Edwards. But BRL. we want the next thing I want to Leadership show you is navigating around an email that has a bunch of headings and links and so forth. So I'm going to go to today's email from Colby Garrison. David Goldfield. No, Paul Ed that was Edwards. not. So if I B. type. Colby Garrison. ACB Community Event. Enter to open the email. That's just a better ACB review. ACB Community Events. Tuesday Schedule. Chanel. All mail. Okay. And it should have Tuesday opened. is here. Please read so if I Tuesday just, is here. you know, we can just casually read through here by pressing down arrow. Please read to the end for information on a contest for internationally located participants. Have a wonderful day. Space. And keep pressing down arrow. But there's so much to this email. Maybe there's a call that we want to get to at, you know, 5 p.m. Or maybe we just are waking up in the morning and we want to see what the events are without reading a ton of stuff about them. So... One thing you can do is navigate by heading. If your quick nav is off, as mine is, I would use VO command H. If your quick nav is on and you would use the letter H or go into your rotor, that should all be review from the Safari lesson. But I'm going to now press command option. I mean, I'm sorry, VO command H. Even I get my commands messed up. Heading level two, Tuesday, May 10th, 2000. Heading level three, three items. ACB presence. Clickable. By the way, I happen to notice these emails are great if you happen to use Quick Nav on and you want to just jump to events directly, you can type the number three and that takes you to the events that are all at heading level three. And announcements are at heading level two. I have an affinity for numbers, so those things pop out to me. Anyway, eh, who cares about ACB Presents? That's only a call I have to do every day. Uh, no, I, I love that call. Just being sarcastic. Let's do VO Command H again. Heading level three. Herbie's Cooking Corner. 10 oh, a.m. ET. Wow, what's 7 a.m. ET. 4 a.m. HT. Who's this Herbie person anyway? So I'm going to press down arrow. Heading level two. Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Uh. Space. Heading level three link. ACB presence. The day. Yeah. So what happens is it our keyboard cursor and our voiceover cursor seem to be in two different places or the mouse. So what you have to do is when you navigate by headings, let's go back to Herbie's Cooking Corner. I'll do VO Command H. Heading level three. Herbie's Cooking Corner. 10 a.m. ET. And 7 a.m. ET. now if I actually want to read what he's making... Um, let's do via right arrow. Make chicken stir fry. Items needed. Boneless chicken, fresh broccoli, other vegetables like onions and peppers, sugar, corn starch, grown ginger, garlic powder, soy sauce. All right, you get the idea. Hopefully you have had your dinner. If not, well, you might want to go get some um, after class, which will be over soon. But that is, you use via right and left to go forward after you've located the heading or the link that you want. Let's say we want to find the link Links menu. for Braille Together. What I did now is bring up my web rotor, which you can do in an email, with VOU. Headings menu. Links menu. Oh, it was already on links. So if I type in, oh, um, actually, no, I've, well, I've changed my mind. I want that call about coffee. There's some call about coffee today. So if I do COF. Let, let, neighborhood coffee clutch. Two items. Um, that's not quite what I had in mind. Link. The ins and outs of coffee. Oh, the ins and outs of coffee. Okay, so if I press enter here. Link. The ins and outs of coffee. And then if I do via right. One tap mobile plus one three one two six two six oh, six. All right, so that's how I can connect if I want to get on on my phone. And hopefully everybody will have sent an email by this time to community at acb.org in case you're interested in any of these events. Because they're awesome. And... But if you want to read the description for this call, we would just feel left. The ins and outs of coffee. Join the call. 
Join us for a final installment of the ins and outs of coffee at level left. three. The ins and outs of. But if you wanted to activate the link, once you moved to it, you could press enter or space. I mean, enter or via space, just like you do in Safari. So um, emails can appear like web pages, but unlike web pages, you have to use via right and via left to move forward once you locate a link, heading, or button or else you'll be stuck back at the beginning. That is the long and the short of Close. this. We are done with the Finder. current lesson or what I Safari. plan to cover. Zoom us. So now Zoom. I am open for Mute check. questions. If anyone wants you are to ask, computer now sound. is your chance. Or Herbie, if you wish to add anything. This is Becky, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Becky. I did want to add in something real quick, guys, and this is what? very important. If you call me wanting help with private <laughs> mail server settings, I am going to give you a pop quiz question on stuff that we've covered in the course. So, and if I know <laughs> where you're struggling, it's going to okay, be one of those Okay, well, I questions. mentioned so. only, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you call me, that that's specifically if you call me wanting help. If you ask me in other forms, you're going to be fine, so. <laughs> All right. So so go ahead, Becky, and then I think Kim, but go ahead, Becky. Okay. I think I missed um part of an email of um MSN because I noticed when you did the list it said exchange Gmail had a whole bunch of them. Um yeah, but didn't have MSN. Exactly. So if you I have an MSN, so in that case, where do you where do you go on the Mac for that? You would probably try other. Okay. And then put in, like I did with Comcast, I just right. put in my Comcast address and password. It found the appropriate server settings. So I would give that a try. And then if it can't find the server settings, it will tell you. And then hopefully you have found those on your own. Um, and then you can put them in. Right, like you used to do with Google, if you remember those days. Yep. The HTTP and all that, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Herbie, if you're speaking, we do not hear you, but I, you might be in a separate <laughs> conversation. Um, Kim, well, did you have a question? I did. Um, I know that I can, if I'm just skimming, I'm on, the, I'm on the message list and I'm just looking at the headers and the preview. And I know I can, if I'm not interested in it, I can delete it from there. Should I also be able to delete um, a message if I'm in the ma in the mail itself and reading it, you know, line by line? Mm -hmm. Can I hit delete to to delete it? Yes, you can. Okay. I don't so. remember where it takes you. I would assume it would take you back into your inbox, um, but ah, I okay. I just I I don't remember that. But you can delete it from there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Bumi? Yes, Bumi? What's the difference between just typing, like last week you were just, when you wanted to search, you were just typing the first few letters and then the difference between that and using control option F to search? Oh, yeah. So um, when I was using, when I was just typing in a few letters, that was... For messages that I knew I had like somewhere, you know, I was pretty sure they were in my inbox and I was pretty sure I'd seen them recently, although we encountered one all the way from July, which, or January. The other one is more so if you want to find a bunch of messages on a particular subject or you're, you're not quite sure who the message is from and what the subject had in it, but you think it had certain words. So that's where the command option F might be more useful. But if you know of a specific message that's already in your inbox, that's where first letter navigation is useful. Okay, so the first letter navigation only searches your inbox well, it searches whatever mail folder you happen to be in. So if oh, okay. you choose to use it in, you know, you could try to use it in trash or, or uh, sent or whatever. But oh, okay. if you're not even sure where the message ended up, um, in what folder the message is that you want, that's where the command option F is useful because it can search all those folders. 
Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh huh. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, well, um, Herbie, what can they look forward to in next week's lesson? Or did you want to start talking a little bit about that? I will start talking about next week's lesson. I won't be demoing anything tonight because I am on a different Mac. And yeah, we can one. tell. Well, yeah, and I have happy. a question then. Oh, okay. Oh. I got myself into a pickle just now. <laughs> Uh-oh. And I don't know how to get out of it. Oh, so no. I, I was playing around with my, because I had, was doing, you know, copying what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And so I showed my favorites bar and I was playing around and removing things from my favorites that I didn't want or that I did. Yeah, that I didn't want there in my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I ended up removing something that I don't want to be removed and I can't get back to it. Okay. So, um, what you want and to that do is my all inboxes folder. I cannot get it back. Okay. So let me see. Um, mail, if I go into mail, mail and in I show my favorites, show favorites bar, actually what we might want to do is rather than showing the favorites bar, hold on. Um, vertical split verticals, messages, tape, vertical mailbox in mailboxes, favorites. Expanded five okay, items and closed. So here, level one. If level we one. go to the mailboxes table and look at favorites. In text. Favorite. Okay, text. I guess we don't need to interact with the text. And then the way I know to get the add button to appear is to do a, if we route the mouse to that, VO command F5. Favorites. Okay. Sell three items. And Display then, alternate items. Um, we do VO command shift space. Mouse down on. And it should. Favorites all inboxes. Um, Favorites. And then if we do VO command shift space again, just to. Mouse up on. Fav all in favorite in add button. And then we interact with favorites. It should show an add button <coughs> to the right of favorites. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a convolute. And if you go into the add button. In dialog, mailbox to add, pop up button, add favorite. Then you can choose a mailbox to add. Okay. All right. So you said VO command and F5 to. Yeah. And then VO command shift space after that. So it's oh, those. shift space. Yep. Okay. And then you can just do VO command shift space again. It's basically like locking the mouse and then, you know, releasing it just to try to bring up more options. And then if you interact and then via right, oh, were you on um, where it said favorites? Yeah, I was. And you did that. And if you interact. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not an add button there. No. Help button. Mailbox nope. to add. Pop up button. Okay, Mailbox. so what if you try when you're on favorites? Favorite mail favorites doing bar group. VO Mailbox in mailboxes table. Space. Favorites. Add button. Expanded five. Press and show menu. Yeah, try to go to show menu and see if it will come up there. No? No, it went away. What the heck? All right, oh, so can you do VO command F5, um, VO command shift, no, sorry, VO command F5 again. Favorites, add button. The top Favorites, of sidebar for some reason. Okay, are you in, so you need to be in your mailboxes table. Okay. Okay, I thought you said my favorites. Okay. Yeah, I know, but favorites is at the top of that mailboxes table. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I get it. Sorry, I realized. Go. I got it. I got it. I, I no, realized okay. at first, I, you know, and then I was doing the wrong thing, so. Okay, it says displaying all favorites now. Okay. So, let's. There we go. Yep. There's an add button. Okay. okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Hi, favorites. <laughs> You're welcome. 
Sorry, that was, I was trying to figure out messed. where to go. So sorry about that. And you get playing around and you mess up. Zoom us. Yep, Zoom I know. I, I, good question, though. Miss Becky, may I ask a follow up? Sure. Um, I just got me curious. I mean, I'm sorry for Nikki's issues, but uh, the, that um, command when you were doing the, the mouse simulation, when do you have to use that and why? Is it like the uh, JAWS, the mouse cursor with JAWS or the, or the you know, like the PC cursor? Kind of. It's like the mouse button lock. Um, I, used to oh. have to, it, I used to have to do that in messages to bring up the reactions. Now you don't have to. A lot of that is covered. More and more things are being done now with VO command space, so you don't right. need to do that other thing. But occasionally, that other thing will bring up additional options. So that's a mouse lock? I think that's what it's called. Let me go into okay. keyboard help. Starting keyboard help. Tap we'll keys to hear their names. If we do Fold down command, the control. Shift, command. Space. Option. Shift. Space. Mouse down. Performs a mouse down at uh, the current no. mouse location. Let's, okay. Control. Caps Yo. lock. Control. Option. Command. Shift. Space. Mouse down. Performs a mouse down at the current mouse location. Okay, I guess it's called mouse down. So caps lock, shift, space, click mouse. Performs okay, a mouse so click at the current shift mouse location. Space is just Control. the click mouse, but VO command shift space is mouse down. So and when should you invoke okay. those? I'm assuming if something is inaccessible, you should do that because it's yeah. Okay. Yep. Or if, you know, if you can't seem to get VO shift M to work on something or VO command space, um, you might try that other option. Okay. Um, forgive me. I, just, I don't remember us covering that as much. So I thought, oh, damn. Because that's a bit more advanced. That's something <laughs> that, you yeah. know, this is only a basics class. So, yeah. um, you know, it's good for people to know, but I don't, you know, a lot of people that would get very confusing. And, you know, that just... Yeah, it would be, and especially if you don't have to use it that often. I mean, right. I only knew of that one thing to do in favorites because, like Nikki, I'd hidden my all mailboxes or my all mail or something so archive. So, right. I um, mean, and it took yeah. me months of googling or randomly googling to figure that out. Because um, I don't, I don't even see that in Apple support. That's something that's not even, it's not even there. Right. So that's why I wonder, well, how would you even, maybe they should put that in there because you maybe. obviously need it. Well, yep. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So, 20, zero 08. Herbie, you can just give them, I guess, an overview or let them know what you were going to cover. Uh, you're muted. 20, zero, nine, mail, finder, safari, Amadeus, VLC, loopback, zoom us. And you are still muted, Herbie. Or you can't hear us. So, um, if he all cannot. Right, let's try this. All right. Seeing if I could use my headset mic, but um, there's a reason why this headset is plugged into the Mac. All right. So next week, we're going to talk about messages and FaceTime. If you read the article that Chanel gave us in, in the, the syllabus. syllabus, then you are going to have a much easier time understanding what I'm going to teach you. And I highly encourage you to do so. Even I did it today. So uh, if I took the time to do homework, then uh, so can you. And guess what, guys? We're going to be talking about some previous commands we've talked about in here. So make sure you're familiar with the difference between paste and move. Make sure you know your command ends, your command commas, and stuff like that. And so uh, you know, make sure you uh, know all that because I'm going to be referring to stuff. And... Um, Make sure you know your file menus as well, the difference between your VOM and your uh, VO shift M, because you never know when that's going to crop up in any of uh, next week's lesson, especially if we talk about FaceTime. So I hope you will all show up for that, and I'm going to do my best to make some of the questions as tricky as possible to make sure that you're paying attention. So. 
Um, did I say that? Oops, I should. You have did. That. I did. But um, for instance, one of my questions is going to be: What is something you can do in messages that you cannot do in mail? Now you do not know the answer to this yet, probably. Um, but you will next week, so yep. be prepared. But uh, messages is actually going to be a, uh, I, I think it's one of the more fun things to do. It and is. I was really happy because the person that wrote the article loves messages and FaceTime for the exact same reasons I do. So mm -hmm. I, I could have written it as well, but there's a couple things I will be covering. The article will not, does not mention. So um, that is what you can expect next week. And just a reminder that we will have Mac and Talk the following week, and then we are going to have our final review session the following week after that. And I'm going to have it right here on Tuesday night, because I know pretty much everybody can make that, because you're all here in this class. And we're going to go over everything that we've covered in the class from the beginning to the end, the alpha, omega, beta, gamma, beta. delta. Well, alpha is the beginning, <laughs> omega is the end. So. Oh. But we'll cover okay. everything in between beta, gamma, epsilon. So um, anyway, we're going to, it's going to be a great, it's optional, of course, if you don't come, that's fine. But I might have my feelings hurt. You don't want that. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's, like I said, we're going to go over all the questions. And yes, I know what is on Becky's mind. Lesson five, I have been negligent in my duties. I will get that But maybe your you. review session can just focus. It's on lesson five a bit. It more. can save myself some work. I like that idea. Yeah. Excellent. So that's what we will do. Um, but and that will be on that other link I gave you because of the fact, like I said, I have a better control over there and making sure things work with the recordings and stuff. So. And we are still meeting this Thursday, correct? Yes. Okay. We Just are check. meeting this Thursday. All right. And to go over today's lesson and answer any questions that you have if uh, you've been playing around with stuff like Nikki was and uh, you run into a problem, Thursday is going to be a great opportunity to talk about that. Yep. This is Becky. Really yes, quick. Becky. Okay, the messages, that is the Catalyst app, but the FaceTime is a regular app, right? Because I understand there's some I differences. I don't know no. if FaceTime no. is a Catalyst app or not, and I really, yeah. it's, I'm not going to go into all that. What I'm going to go into is how you use well, the apps. A Catalyst app is any app that you can't get on a, on a, a, a Mac that's not M1, correct? I think a Catalyst app is an app that kind of combines feature, like, that they've, they've made their... I can I just, see why Becky says that because the Messages app on the Mac is kind of like the Messages app on iOS. They've tried to make it, you right. know, more similar. I um, really don't want to get into that term because I want to make sure you no. all know how to use the app. That's yeah, that's the main concern. thing. I'm not, you know, it's it's different. If if your last, I will say, if your last experience with Messages was anything Catalina and older, there's going mm -hmm. to be some differences. Yeah. So that much I will say. FaceTime, there are a couple of minor differences that you need to be aware of, but Messages is going to be the bigger one, and it is a big sir. They did redesign the app, so that's what's important, and we're yep. going to go over everything that you can do with Messages that I know of anyway. All right, and that's quite a bit, and... I love messages on the Mac. I'm looking forward to that lesson. I hope you are. And with that, we will call it a night. So thanks, everyone. See you back here on, well, see you on Thursday and on, again on Tuesday. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank Bye. you.